Photography is not a perfect science. So sometimes we're out taking photos and we wish that we had some extra gear. If you've ever encountered a waterfall and not had your tripod or your neutral density filter and you still want to create that blurry, silky look to the water, not to worry. I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor and in this video tutorial, you'll see how you can use the tools in Luminar Neo to do just that. So if you're ready, let's get started. Before I show you the tools, let me just show you a couple of quick before and afters. If you ever arrive at a scene like this that's in the bright sun and you don't have a tripod or a neutral density filter, which means you won't be able to use a long starter speed and get the silky smooth water like you see here. But that's not a problem because this is what you can do with Luminar Neo. There's the before image and after. This is the one I'm going to work on in this tutorial. It's a stock image from Unsplash. If you'd like to download it and follow along with the video, there's a link for you to do so in the description area below. Here's the before and after. I made a virtual copy of this image right here and removed the blur effect so I can show you how to do it. If you want to make a virtual copy of this or any image, just right click and choose virtual copy from the pop-up list. Or you can use the keyboard shortcut, command or control, apostrophe. I use a lot of keyboard shortcuts when I'm photo editing, including how to go to the edit module. So select the image you want and just click E for edit. If you'd like to download a copy of my free Luminar Neo keyboard shortcuts cheat sheet, yes, that is a tongue twister, there's a link for that in the description below as well. Now that we're in the edit module, you can see that I've done some basic editing to the stock image, just to darken the edges and adjust the color a little bit. You can do the same if you want, or just start with the base image. Now let's add the blur. So head to the tools module and down to the creative section where you'll find the blur tool. The option we're going to use for this one is motion. Let me just hide the thumbnail so we can see the image a little bigger. So make sure you've clicked the motion option and then drag the amount slider up. Go about halfway because we want to still be able to see the image underneath so that we can get the direction correct. Using the angle slider, let's start with it all the way to the right. That means the blur is going straight up and down vertically. From there, I'm just going to tweak it a little bit because what I want to do is I want to try and match the angle of the blur to the actual direction that the water is flowing. Watch the waterfall as I adjust it. You can see at one point it matches a little bit better, right about there. Now bring the amount slider all the way up to 100. Then we need to use the masking tool to apply it locally so it goes only on the water. So click masking. For this kind of thing, I usually just head straight to the brush, but I'm going to actually invert the mask to hide it or clear it. So you can choose clear or invert, either works, so that the effect is currently hidden. Now, using the brush, I can paint it in gradually where I want it. I'm gonna go at 100% strength and softness and get a brush that is just about the size of the waterfall maybe a little bigger. Use the keyboard shortcuts again, right square bracket key to make the brush larger and left square bracket to make it smaller. So I'm gonna start there. Because the softness of the brush is large, the inside circle is where the effect will apply fully and it will fade out towards the edge of the brush. So I'm going to start here and just go to the bottom like that. At first glance, that's pretty good. Right? If we just turn the tool on and off using the eyeball, you can see that it's not too bad. But let's zoom in and take a closer look. I want to make sure that it looks realistic. So where the telltale signs are going to appear are the top of the water or if any of the surrounding foliage or rocks have been blurred. So I'm going to switch to the erase brush, get a lower strength, and maybe a little smaller brush. And then I'm just going to make sure that the rocks on the edge here are not being blurred. 
as well as most of the greenery, like so. Likewise, the top, we're going to deal with that one separately. So I want to make sure the rocks here are sharp. And when you get to a place where you're not sure what the original look like and where the blur should be, hold down the backslash key. Now you can see the original image. I can see that there should be a little more greenery showing through here. I don't want it to be so perfectly straight because that's a telltale sign that it gives away my editing. I'm holding down the backslash key while I'm painting with the erase brush, like so. Go all the way to the bottom and continue the same way. Notice I did one pass of erase in this area because where the water is thinner, we wouldn't see as much blurring happening. I didn't get much over here, so I'm going to go back to paint with a lower opacity and just get this outer part here. Oops, my strength was a little bit too low. Zero is a little bit too low. And just get this part here. If I want it to look like it's dripping, just get it a little bit more blended. There we go. Remember, what you're looking for is realism. There's the before and after. Maybe I'll do another erase just in that area. There we go. And up here on the top part, I'm going to get a small brush with the erase tool and just sort of do random brush strokes so that it doesn't look so regular. So some in further than others. Can you see how believable that looks? Might need a little bit more blur up top here. So back to paint. There we go. Now we need to deal with this water up top flowing into the waterfall, because if you used a long exposure in camera, it would also be blurred. So to do that, we just need to close the blur tool and open it again to do a second application. Go through the same process, motion blur, bring the amount part way up. And this time we want to match the direction of the stream. I think I have to go this way. That's about right. Again, this opacity or amount slider is going to be helpful in being able to figure out the direction. So get the angle correct. Then let's go back to masking. I'm going to zoom in even closer so I can really see this stream properly. Another way to start your mask is to just select the brush tool and paint, lower the opacity or strength. And the first time you click on the image, it's going to apply the effect where you click and remove it from everywhere else, like so. Now I can just sort of apply the effect where I want it. And I think I want it just on the parts that are the whitest. Also keep in mind that the stream is going to be faster moving in the middle than towards the edge. So let's get a little bit more strength. Go in the middle here, build the effect up. Don't feel like you have to paint all of it in with one brush stroke. Do it little by little and see how it looks. I want to get the edge. I recommend doing a before and after on the tool repeatedly just to check your work to see if you need to do more or less masking or increase or decrease the overall effect of the tool. So now I'm going to go back to adjustments, increase it a little bit so I get more blur. Actually, I liked it lower. Look at that. And you increase the blur, it sort of just goes all mushy. But when it's a lower amount, we get some streaks, but still appears to have a little bit more texture. I think I like that better. You can still go back and forth with masking and paint it in more places if we want. Again, make sure that it is not on the outer parts. So the tree branches, and any of the rocks along the side because they are not moving. So make sure that they are sharp. When applying an effect like this, the giveaway as to I've done some photo editing will be the edges and the details. So pay close attention to both of those things. Let's zoom out and see how it's looking. There's the before and after coming along nicely, but we're not done yet. Remember I talked about watching for details earlier in the tutorial. There's one more detail we need to look at here before we continue with the long exposure. We have to take into account everything that's moving. 
So if we look at the water down here, we could see the ripples and that would not appear the same in a long exposure. So we need to add some blur here as well. Once again, let's use motion blur. And this time I think left to right direction is actually pretty close. So let's do a mount high and mask it in softly. Remember not to paint over the log. The log is not moving. So you might need to zoom in even further. Lowering the softness of your brush will let you get closer to the log as well. So I'm just going to stop there. Let's see how it looks over here. We're probably going to need another blur over here as well. But I'm going to do a different kind. Let's go back to adjustments. Check the amount. That looks a little better. Now to fix the bottom part, what I'm going to do is use the blur tool one more time. But this time I'm going to choose the twisted option, set the amount to a low amount so we can see the image underneath, leave the angle at zero because we just want like a zoom effect, not a twirl. If we move it, we're going to get a twirl. And then place the blur center to grab it from up here, place the blur center right at the bottom of the waterfall. We may need to adjust the position once we get it masked. Then just do the same. Mask it in gently from here so it radiates out from that central point. Going back to adjustments, we can readjust the blur placement if we need to. And of course, dial it down or up. That gives it just enough believability, I think. I would likely do another pass of the blur filter and get this area of the water going down the hill as well. Let me do that and I'll show you the finished image. There we go. That looks better. Now it's time to finish off the image with a few other effects. If you are enjoying this tutorial and want even more Luminar Neo education, step-by-step -step instructions, then I have the course for you. We are in the process of completely redoing our Luminar Neo course, bringing it up to 2025 with all the tools and all the extensions. There are a lot of bonuses that come with the course, including my raw files, some skies, texture overlays, and more. There's a link in the description area below to get more information. If you need to purchase Luminar Neo or upgrade, you can also use our discount code DPM10 to get 10% off when you check out on the Skyland website. And now let's get back to the tutorial. I want to give the water a little bit more of a hazy effect. So there's a couple of tools in Luminar that are really good for that. Find the glow tool, which is right above blur. And then the type of glow you want is literally glow. Drag the amount up quite high and you'll see what it's doing. It literally takes any light areas in your image and adds a hazy glow around them. In this case, it's doing wonders on the water, but I don't necessarily want it up here. So I'm going to mask it using a radial gradient and just put it over the waterfall area because I don't want to lighten this rock maybe even tighter, about like that. So now it's not affecting the top right corner and I don't want it affecting this rock. Let's have a look. Nice, but we're not done yet. The next tool I'm going to use is up in the landscape area and that is Atmosphere AI. I had to play with this one earlier to figure out which one I wanted to use. There's four options here. To get it to work right, drag all the sliders up to 100% and then just go through the pull down menu and see which one you want to use. I decided that haze worked well because it started about here and went down to the bottom. And once again, I want to mask it just to the area of the water. So I could use the same type of mask, radial gradient. I could have copied and pasted the other one. That would have been a good idea. And I want most of this haze towards the bottom of the waterfall. So I'm going to let it fade off towards the top. Likewise, I don't want it coming across on this rock like so. Now let's take a look. There's the before and after. 
Can you just feel the mist on your face now? Now I can just dial the amount down and mask it a little bit more. I'm going to use the brush and just erase at a lower opacity because once again, details matter. So I want to just remove it from the areas that are maybe up higher, like so this rock over here for sure. And maybe just the darker areas. I don't think the mist is going to be up high. So let's remove it up there. There we go. There's the before and after, but we have one more tool to go. Come back down to the creative section and find mystical. This is one of my favorite tools for landscape photos ever. Drag it up quite high. With this one, you have a creative decision to make. You can apply it to the whole image, and I think it actually looks pretty good, or you can just apply it to select areas. I'm not happy with this color, so I'm gonna bring the saturation down a little bit and just shift it a little bit more yellow. That's better. I've got the amount quite high. I can always come back and dial it down, but I wanna just see where it is so that I can paint it off or erase it from the parts that I want a little bit less hazy. So I'm gonna, again, keep the rock face a little bit sharper, like so, this one too. And then I'm just gonna get a really big brush and do a little bit less over the forest. So because I'm painting at 39 strength, I'm not removing the effect completely, just lowering it where I'm painting with the erase brush. Now I can come back to adjustments and just dial it down a little bit. A little more drama with the shadows and the smoothest sliders. And there we have it. So there's the finished image. What do you think? Is it believable? I think so. Let me show you a couple more before and afters where I applied the same effect. Here's another example of a waterfall in bright sun where if you don't have your neutral density filter, you can't create this kind of look. But using the tools in Luminar Neo, ta-da, you can. Here's another before and after. I also changed the sky on this one. I applied the blur tool a couple of times here to match the direction of the water. So once for the vertical water and once for the diagonal. Likewise, on this image, you could see that I applied blur four times. There's the before and after. I wanted to create an illusion of the water swirling in different directions in the foreground. That's why I applied it so many times. On the image that I showed you at the beginning, I applied blur three times to this one. Let me show you. The first one was just to make the water falling directly down or vertical blurry. You know how to do that. Then on the second iteration of the blur tool, I use the twisted setting. This one I applied to the bottom of the image down here and you can see what it's doing. So it looks like the water hits the pond and then is spraying outward. You can use this tool and place the blur center down at the bottom like this. So you can create the direction from which the water goes outward. I like it a little bit more subtle though. Then finally, I use the same technique one more time with twisted option on the top of the water up here, but I kept it low so it's more subtle. So what do you think of my waterfall trick? Give it a go on some of your images. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you'd like to check out more on our YouTube channel, click one on the screen now. Remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my new videos.